Let's roll. <laughs> so what did you learn from looking at the Arizona game film? What did you learn about your team from the um, first game? The guys are resilient. I love the way they, they uh, kept kept playing, you know. Um, there was no doubt, even when we went down, and we led 58 minutes in the game, <laughs> or, or for the most part, when we took the lead and that field goal. Uh, we, we had that lead for a long time, and then uh, it, it was a little deflating for them to score like that, but um, it was more deflating for our fans, but for the players in the sideline, we were fine. Uh, we saw the time, saw that there was time left for us to make, make something happen, and um, our guys, they, they responded the right way, and you know, end up coming up with a win. So um, just learned that our guys will fight through anything, and and they'll just keep playing until the, until the zero zero seconds left on the clock. And just really proud of the way they played. You put a lot, you know, large, you, had, you had quite a few yards with the balance. Third down conversions were good. Time of possession clearly in your favor. Mm -hmm. How does that need to? What needs to change for that to translate into more points? Because on paper, it seems like that should have been more than 18. Yeah, we had to capitalize on some of the some of the things that we um, the opportunities that we had. You know, we we had some um, points taken off the board because, or, well, maybe not points, but we had some opportunities to score some touchdowns taken off by by some mistakes. And um, <clears throat> you know, they're high effort. I mean, the guys are just trying hard to make a play, and so we we appreciate that. And, but we just need to play smarter. So there's a lot of lessons to be learned from that, and, and we had some some opportunities to make some big plays on defense. I mean, it's it's never perfect, but um, there were chances that we had in that game to really put it away. And um, I don't think we capitalized on a lot of a lot of those. But, but um, you know, our guys fought back. We won the game. So you can make a lot of improvement from week one to week two, and we look to limit you know limit those mistakes. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to beat them over with with you know correcting them because the guys are working hard. And so there's ways to just motivate them to play smarter, and uh, you know realize what what we're trying to do as a team. And I thought for the most part we managed the game really well as a team, and, and it was a team victory. Did you come out of a pretty healthy, or how was your injury situation? Yeah, I mean we, we had some guys banged up here and there, but um, that's every game. But um, for the most part, uh, we should be good. You didn't see Troy Warner towards the end, was he? Oh yeah, he came back. Oh, so he did. Yeah, you should see the film. He came back. <laughs> so, nice try. <laughs> no, he came back. He, it was just so. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to be funny. But uh, the um, he was he came back, and, and it's always the first game type of deal where people cramp up. I mean, if you watch college football over the weekend, you had guys just not used to that. You can be in great shape, but um, for some reason, people just cramp up. And and uh, we had some of those guys, uh, you know, have have those issues and. Uh, but it wasn't it wasn't as many as it wasn't like anything out, out of the ordinary administrative wise what was your takeaway from the communication between you and the staff through your first game oh they're great I mean I love the way Elisa ran the defense uh, it, was, it was perfect you know we, we made some mistakes uh, on the field but as far as him calling the game I thought he did a great job uh, I thought Ty did a great job calling the game on offense um, it was really just, we had a game plan going in, trying to execute as a, as a staff, and uh, those two worked really well together. And then, uh, you know, Ed did a great job with special teams, and um, even to the point of choosing the kicker at the end. And so it all worked out, and, and we were all a cohesive unit on the staff. And I thought our team was the same thing, and then, uh, you know, we were able to get the victory. But there's some things that we, we can do better as, as a staff, but for the most part, that, that's just little details here and there. It's nothing really. Um, out of, out, of, out of what we saw, nothing that really needs to change. Those guys are unbelievable, and they did exactly what I thought they would do. There, there are more than 40 Polynesian players on the two deep charts of the two teams. Mm -hmm. What influence have you, you see the Polynesians have had on this rivalry game? Well, I think there's a lot of Polynesians in Utah and in the West Coast, and so um, and there's a quite a number that that uh, you know love playing football here, and so you, you have. Coaching staffs that recruit well, and then and I think that um, you know it's it's I never really counted out the demographic of the starters in the two deep. So I um, I hate just focusing on one 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 group, but I think that uh, you know to be a great football player and be on a two deep on any roster is tough. And so um, just have really good good guys that love to play the game and they're tough, and uh, some of them happen to be Polynesian, some of them happen to be. A, African Americans, some African Caucasian, and all together they make great football. You know, so uh, 
Hopefully we'll have a good game this Saturday. Today, Stuart Mandel, I think he wrote that, that Utah BYU has become the nastiest rivalry out there. Do you see it that way, or do you see it, think it's softened a little bit with you coming over to BYU? I've never saw it as nasty, really, from my point of view. But I, I, I can see when you have two great programs that compete, um, you know, and then relatively close, you know, it, it becomes, uh, I mean, it gets involved. You, you, you just talk to Kai, and he has a brother that's at, on Utah's team, and so uh, it, it affects families, you know, so when it gets to the home, it becomes fun, but uh, I can see some people saying it becomes nasty. I don't think it's as nasty as what others think. I think there's a lot of, um, I think there's a, there's a lot of friendships and a lot of, uh, I don't know, a lot of uh, fun behind it all. I mean, I, I know I love Kyle, and he, he loves me. We're, we're, you know, we're going to be friends no matter what, and this is going to be one of those things that extends our friendship where we get on the football field and compete and we'll hug afterwards. So uh, I think it's just whatever you make of it. Did it feel like more of a rivalry as a player or now as a coach or about the same? Uh, about the same. I mean, I, I, I don't – I grew up cheering for BYU, but I also remember uh, cheering for some of the guys on the Utah squad back in the day. Who, I mean, I remember seeing Felipe Mokofisi Sr. when he played and cheering for him and, and uh, all the great players that played up there in Utah. So, um, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see it as a big-time rivalry uh, hatred as, every, as a lot of others see it. I, I think it's a, it's a, lot, of, a lot of fun and it's exciting and um, it's a lot, of, a lot of good people involved in, um, in both fan bases. And so it's going to be another great weekend. You spent so long at Utah in your career, and then obviously last year with OSU, was it so a little weird going back to that stadium, going into the visiting locker room like that? Or? No, you know what? It, it, it was more weird for me coming to BYU when I was at Utah and being in that locker room because I played so many games in, in the BYU locker room, the home locker room. So um, that was weird. But um, no, I, I, I think that uh, you know, I spent a decade there at Utah, so. Uh, you know, going back when I was at Oregon State, we went back there last year, Gary and I, and, and, and Oregon State, and it was really cool. It was a cool experience. You know, we obviously lost the game, and, and it was a tough game, but but uh, uh, I thought the fans were great. You know, and, and going back to to Rice Cycles, we're excited. I mean, it's a great place to play a football game, and uh, just to talk to our players about the opportunity that we have to go into that stadium and uh, be around such great, passionate fans. I mean, it, it's a I think you heard Taysom talk about it. It's an exciting time, so we're looking forward to going up there and, and uh, you know, seeing that place. I mean, it's going to be fun. So, yeah, just, I don't know. I don't think it's weird at all. I think that's just part of the way. The, you can have, you can say the same thing for Kyle and Justin and A-Rod and all those guys over there that, that are on that side, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. BYU has had a lot of recent success against Utah. What would it mean to the program to turn that around and, and come out with a win on Saturday? I'm not really worried about the past in, in this in this instance. We're just worried about this game and the season. You know, um, I think people made a big deal about our, uh, you know, me as a defense coordinator against Richard Rod's offense. Uh, you, you can make whatever story you want out of everything. Uh, we control what we what we can control, and that's now. You know, we can't go back and change what happened in the past. And I was actually on the other side for some of those wins. You know, so. Um, I uh, just have to appreciate the, the, the journey that we're in now and appreciate this week and appreciate the moment that these guys have to go and compete against uh, great young men on the other side in front of a great great fan base and uh, you know just enjoy the moment and, and hopefully we come up with a victory. Is that atmosphere among these players being that some of them are 0-3 against Utah? Uh, we haven't talked about it really, about their their um, their personal records because it's not a personal thing, so it's a team deal, you know. And, uh, I've said it before. If you, if you want, if you want to change things and do something about it, and, and uh, you know we control it, so we will see what we can do on our part and, and try to win that game. But uh, you know they're, they're going to be they're they're athletic, uh, great team on the other side as well. So it'll be it'll be fun. That's why we play the game, and we don't uh, sit there and match it up on on paper. We got to go out and play and see who can perform for the 60 minutes and. If you need more time, like some of these games have been, we'll go to overtime if we need to. But you know, we'll try to compete and have fun and, and see what happens. Will you talk to Kyle at all in the lead up to this game? Probably not. No. I mean, uh, you know, we've texted in the past, and then we I mean, we have a great relationship. Played golf in the summer, and we'll hang out. And I, I mean, I, you know, we have that relationship that's been there for 
a decade, so we're going to always remain friends. But this is one of those weeks where we want to respect their preparation. They're going to respect ours, and, and um, you know we'll go go to work this week and we'll play. I mean, we'll see each other before the game. I'll hug a bunch of people. I'll see a lot of people in, in the stands and a lot of people um, on the other sideline that I, that I, I really love and appreciate. And, and then once the, well, the the coin toss goes up and the game starts, we just go right back to game mode and. Then afterwards, we'll, we'll hug and, and our friendships will all continue. So, um, you know, but in that 60 minutes, it's going to be competitive. It's going to be fun, and uh, both sides are going to want to win and do their best to do it to, to get that that goal. And uh, we'll see who wins out. You, you called it an honor to to call Utah your rival now. Mm -hmm. Which is a big kind of switch from what BYU people referred to Utah as before. Kind of, do you see that as your role, kind of? To, maybe bridge the two fan bases a little bit and to kind of... No, that's, that's not... My role is to coach football and, and get this team ready for a football game, but um, how I do it and the way I go, it's, it's, this is my personality. Um, if anyone knows me, knows that, that uh, you know, that I'm going to approach every game with, with uh, the will to win, but at the same time, I won't stomp over people or... or uh, uh, well, I, I'll speak the truth. I mean, they're great to me and my family for 10 years. I had a great perspective, and uh, my point of view was awesome. You know, they're great to me. And so I've all, I'll never say anything bad about the University of Utah, about the athletic program, especially about the football team, because uh, they're so great to me. And uh, I think it's important for me to share that with everyone. And it's okay that, uh, you know, when we made that transition from the Mountain West to Pac-12, it was, it was great for me to be there. And, see that movement and see that fan base grow and, and uh, you know see the must become as big as it is now but now as a head coach at, at BYU it's my job to get this place growing and, and uh, you know get the excitement about our football team but also to respect our opponents is really important to me because I think that's what the game of football is about is respect and uh, there's not a lot of people that do what these guys do in, in the country and I want to make sure that our players respect the other team and, and uh, you know, take the field with that level of respect, and I think that they'll play a lot cleaner game, and, and uh, they'll do they'll do their job a lot a lot better if they do that. Last question: What did you learn from Kyle about how to handle a rivalry game? Well, I think for the most part, the rivalry game is a special game because it's we're so close, you know. And um, now that we're here, uh, you know, it, it it feels like another game. But you're supposed to, as a coach, you're, you're trying to plan it like another game, but. Uh, you want to make sure that that I uh, do everything you can to exhaust the opportunity to win this game. So uh, I've learned that from Kyle. It's just you want to win, and uh, you do your best, and then you'll have to deal with the rest afterwards. And it was a lot easier at the end of the year to do that and uh, just exhaust everything, and then not really have to worry about the next week. But uh, right now we're gonna exhaust everything we can, and then and then worry about it afterwards. So I know they'll do the same. So. See what happens, <laughs> but yeah, he's a great coach, man, and, and a great person. And uh, like I said, I meant I meant it with all 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 respect that, that it's an honor for us to be there and an honor for us to play this game. Thank you.